Can a laptop really be faster than a desktop? Well, I didn't believe it for myself until I tested it, and this thing blew my mind. Both of these come in at $4,000. The specs are slightly different. You could see that the M2 Ultra Max Studio has more CPU cores, more graphics cores, and a little bit more RAM, but for only 200 bucks more, you can match that 64 gigabytes of RAM in your MacBook. Now, I personally spent four grand for the M2 Ultra Max Studio just a few months ago to be our main video editing computer, and now Apple launches this laptop and I kind of wish I didn't buy that thing because with a MacBook, you not only get the graphics and CPU performance, but you get the beautiful display that gets super bright. You get speakers, you get a keyboard and a trackpad, and then of course the batteries that are inside, which means you could just unplug it from your display and take it and use it on the go, where with the Mac Studio, you have to buy all those accessories and a display, so it gets a lot more expensive. Now, of course, the Mac Studio does have its upsides, and I'll talk about those after the performance, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, as far as the storage, the speeds are very similar for the read, and the write speeds are slightly faster on the MacBook, and of course, if you upgrade to higher capacities, they both will get a little bit faster. Getting into CPU performance with Geekbench 6, the MacBook smokes the Mac Studio in single core performance. That's 18% faster. Now, of course, we have the difference in clock speeds, 4.05 compared to 3.5. That's a 16% higher uh, clock speed, but the performance difference is even greater. Now, as far as the core count, we have 16 cores compared to 24 cores. And if we just look at performance cores, we have 12 compared to 16. That is 33% more cores with the M2 Ultra, so the performance should be better, right? <laughs> no, I was shocked to see over 21,000 on the MacBook compared to 20,800. So how is this possible? Well, we had a 16% higher uh, CPU clock speed, but the difference that we're making up is about 34%. So the efficiency cores are also better. And then with that, we're running the new three nanometer design, which also improves the performance. And this is just mind blowing. As far as web applications, we also get 34% better performance with the MacBook. And let me tell you, when you're using this thing, it absolutely flies through everything. You can actually tell the difference. And using Figma for web design with this project that was provided to us by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California, everything is super smooth on both, zooming in, things load up really quickly. You can't really tell there. Uh, as far as the exporting time with 12 high resolution layers, here, the MacBook was still faster just by a little bit. But this is something I was not expecting in a machine that is portable. And next, I wanna show you guys the Diamond Shield screen protector for any of the new iPhone 15 models from our sponsor, Taurus. This one is tailor-made for a perfect fit on the 15 Pro Max, fitting seamlessly and enhancing the phone's look. With an extremely easy installation with Taurus's InstaFit method by aligning and attaching the frame, ensuring a bubble-free and dust-free installation with this cool dust removal strip that you pull out before pressing on the bottom of the Insta alignment tool, which lets it naturally expel bubbles and finally, using the scraper tool to remove any excess air bubbles. The screen protector itself is military grade with four times the strength of regular glass and triple ion exchange technology for durability, as well as guarding against edge cracks and daily impacts using edge force technology. And the best part of all is that the glass is fingerprint free with X Silk Tech, which reduces fingerprints by 95%, keeping your screen clean. So go ahead and order the Diamond Shield screen protector from Taurus today using the link in the description below. As far as graphics performance, I'm gonna start out with Geekbench 5's Metal Test, and the Mac has a 40 core GPU now. The Mac Studio has a 60 core. That's 50% more cores. Now, the performance is better on the Mac Studio. That is a 30% difference, whereas we have 50% more cores, so the newer technology, just a few months later, is making up for it. Now, as far as gaming performance, I'm using 3 Mark's Wildlife Extreme, and here, the Mac Studio is faster, better FPS, but that difference is only 18%, 
where we have 50% more cores. Now with that, the power usage of the Mac Studio is 44% higher than we get with the MacBook. And one thing to keep in mind is that the M3 family now has ray tracing, so there's gonna be a lot of games that support that, giving you better visual effects, lower power usage, and a better experience. So that is impressive with the laptop. Now, as far as rendering using Cinebench, the M2 Ultra does score 16% higher than the M3 Max, and with that, it is using 20% more power to do so. And this is where I also need to mention fan noise because the Mac Studio is silent with its massive cooling system that doesn't even feel this. The fans literally run at idle instead of running at about 4,000 RPMs after this stress test is done, and the computer runs at 85 degrees Celsius compared to about 100. So if you care about having a quiet desktop setup, the Mac Studio is where it is at. It's cool and quiet, and that is really nice, whereas the M3 Max, MacBook Pros, they get way louder than any MacBook in the past, and they actually use more power than the older Intel versions, even though this is an ARM chip. Now in Cinebench 2024, the performance gap is actually slightly higher at 20%, so we still get better raw CPU performance, but as far as graphics, because of that ray tracing, the M3 Max MacBook Pro absolutely destroys the Mac Studio 79% percent faster and of course a lot of rendering is now done using graphics and that is very impressive switching over to blender which just got a release that can use ray tracing the macbook is 49 percent faster than that desktop mac studio now it's not as great as in um, you, Cinebench using GPU, and that just shows there's gonna be more optimizations to make it even faster. So if you were somebody out there that wanted to buy a Mac Studio for graphics rendering, um, don't do it. It is not worth it. And now looking at Xcode for programming, the MacBook is almost as fast as the Mac Studio. And I didn't think we'd have a day where a laptop would be able to compete and work just as well while being able to be used on the go using battery power. And then taking a look at music production with Logic using the Logic Benchmark 2 here, we actually get better performance using a MacBook than the Mac Studio. It is crazy. Now, I will say both of these handle logic without an issue at all, but if you're gonna push it to the limits, the MacBook's fans do speed up and you can hear them and that could be an issue, but you're gonna have to have an absolutely insane project to get to that point. And now getting into photo editing, starting with Lightroom Classic, I have a bunch of high resolution raw images that have um, a lot of different changes and color adjustments applied. And usually the desktops would be absolutely amazing at this, and they are, but this MacBook is actually faster than the Mac Studio, despite having a lot less cores, having less RAM, and having less metal graphics performance. And the same thing with Photoshop. I have have a high resolution 50 megapixel 10 image panorama and the MacBook is 33% faster at doing this. It just flies through it and that is thanks to the updates with the three nanometer design, the much newer chip, even though we have M2 and M3, the M2 is actually based off of the A15 compared to the A17, which just came out a couple months ago with the iPhones with the M3 Max. Getting into video editing, starting with stabilizing, both of them just are super quick at doing this. I no longer have to sit around and wait. It is almost instant. But looking at standard H.265 graded projects here, the Mac Studio smokes the MacBook. That is 76% faster exporting this project. Now that is because we are limited by the encoders. Um, even though I have effects, both these machines handle so much effects in real time that it doesn't matter. And for us here at MaxTech, we do export a lot of projects. So it's nice having that faster export speed. Switching over to ProRes, this is ProRes RAW that is graded. Both took just 30 seconds for a five minute project. 
meaning that a 20 minute project would be done in just two minutes. And this is the first time that a MacBook is just as fast as the Mac Studio. Now making things even tougher, we have Red AK RAW that is graded here. And believe it or not, this is where I thought the MacBook would start to fall apart, but the export time was exactly the same. And both of these can handle this footage without any issues at full resolution. It is absolutely crazy. So I decided to throw the absolute toughest project we have, Canon 8K RAW from the Canon R5 camera, and this destroys your CPU and your GPU. And my mind was blown seeing that the MacBook was actually faster than the Mac Studio. That is a 10% difference and something that we never saw before. MacBooks would fall apart because this is maxing out your CPU and your GPU, but this machine right here did not. Now I opened up DaVinci Resolve to see the raw graphics performance for denoising, and this has both temporal and spatial denoising, and both of these could do this at the full 24 FPS playback. So no issues, no waiting, perfect without rendering. Now as far as the graphics overhead, I did see a difference. We have 28 FPS compared to 25, so neither would be able to do this with 30 FPS footage, but we do still see a little bit more compute power in the M2 Ultra. So that is just absolutely crazy. And you're getting such a great value in a portable laptop with everything else that comes with it. And this was never possible before. Now, with that said, the Mac Studio does have six Thunderbolt ports instead of three. Now you can get a nice Thunderbolt 4 dock and we've made a few videos. So I actually use one myself. You also get 10 gigabit ethernet built in, which is really nice. And we do actually use that with one of our Mac Studios. Um, so that is a benefit. So some people will still wanna get a Mac Studio, uh, but if those kind of things don't matter for you, I would say for the first time ever, you can get ultra performance, desktop performance in a MacBook. You're gonna pay four grand for it, but it is not gonna let you down. Go ahead and check out one of those great videos over there. We have a lot more information about these laptops. Click that circle above to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.